Hey everyone, today I have quite a substantial haul for you and I'm going to swatch all the paints that I got. I think that's all I got. Oh no, that's not true. I got also a few uh, pigment sticks. Uh, so I'll show you everything, I'll swatch everything, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the swatching show. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist. Lately, I have been painting with acrylics and I really needed to kind of expand my collection because all of the acrylic paint that I have is a few years old and a lot of the colors just are not what I'm looking for. I want to say, first of all, you can speed up this video. I just you know click at the little gear icon and you can speed it up i do that myself many times uh, you might then hear me speaking really really funny and you know if that annoys you you can switch off the volume and just put on some music let's start this is beige and if you want to use these printables like these swatching pages that i'm using you can find these printables uh, in my shop and they are really really fun to have for swatching your paints. This is a beautiful beautiful color. This is exactly the color I like to have on hand even though you can mix it with um, like an orangey yellow if you add some white to it but just probably you know a more cost-effective way is mixing your own colors but I also like to have some convenience colors so this is called Naples yellow <laughs> just one of my favorite colors now I want to say I want to own something that I said and I was talking if you watched like if you watch my videos I was talking about not doing you know huge hauls on my channel and first of all, when I said it, I meant it, <laughs> but <laughs> I was also uh, referring to kind of my watercolor journey, let's say it like this. And I've been wanting to kind of try new things and mix things up and yeah, just trying new things for quite a while. This color is called Mustard and it's lovely. And kind of focusing on acrylics and mixed media is where I landed. And I don't, I have some acrylic paints, but they're all quite old. Well, now I have a lot of new ones. Uh, this is deep yellow. It's my kind of yellow, which is basically orange, but that's exactly what I like. And I already found something quite similar. So you can see this one is more transparent. I already found something quite similar for um, much, much cheaper. And I'll show you, let's see if I have this swatch. Maybe. So this color, I would say it's quite similar. Um, and I found it from this brand. So this is Sahara Yellow, it's called. Okay, um, so I was referring mostly to watercolors and the kind of like calls that I, you know, saw in my mind as I was saying that was just like, you know, lots and lots of like big sets of supplies, which is something I used to buy. And it took me, you know, a few years and many, many <laughs> dollars later, this is, I can't pronounce this word, <laughs> but it's basically like yellow. I think this word means um, yellow in French. So this is that word, brilliant. And it kind of reminds me of a Naples yellow reddish. Uh, this kind of color so it's kind of like a mm, peachy orangey color very pretty 
uh, that's what I had uh, in mind and I personally I don't want to buy any more like large sets of things and you'll see that like this haul everything is open stock I handpicked very very carefully uh, what kind of uh, colors I was going to get I looked online for a very long time to find swatches of you know as much as I could this is kind of a neutral maybe I can put it like this here um, just looking at swatches so that I can make kind of the biggest effort that I could of not purchasing colors that are not going to be useful for me so I'm like staying behind that but yeah I've been painting a lot and I just I'm the kind of person I need to I like to work with a lot of colors this one is called ash rose and it's beautiful it's like a lovely um mid-tone neutral like for me that would be a neutral it's obviously not neutral uh, because it's more of like a gray browny somewhat pinky color kind of reminds me of taupe but maybe a little bit less gray but i really it's always hard for me to find neutrals that i like because i don't like gray and i don't like most shades of brown <laughs> so i wanted to try this ash rose um, the package, you can see here, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit lighter. So the package is not 100% uh, reliable with uh, these paints. This is Pale Peach. Whoops. So what is wonderful about these is the finish and their consistency. I've been painting a lot using a tool like this like this where I just I'll show you where I just like spread the color with it and these work so well with that they just create this most luscious um, like a flat opaque finish and they are just gorgeous and the color range is I mean, Turner has a very similar product. Both Holbein and Turner are made in Japan and they're very, very similar, almost indistinguishable, I would say. I wouldn't be surprised if they are made in the same manufacture, like uh, same factory. And both have a glorious range of colors. I don't even know actually why I, I think there was just like more information about the Holbein acrylic wash. I'm not sure, like I don't, think there is a reason to pick one over the other and you can like use them uh, interchangeably uh, just you know pick colors that you like this one is this is a color I really really wanted to have and seeing it now in person I'm so so happy this is coral red and I think it's reading a little bit more orange on screen let me look hmm hard to tell but it's yeah it's actually pretty close to this I don't know it's somewhere between it's like one of the colors that I love that I mix a lot myself when I'm playing with yellow and pink so it's like an orange but it's also a bit more like reddish really really pretty okay let's move on to luminous red and this one is looks neon you can't really see it on screen because the camera doesn't like neons but yeah this is what I expected I love this color I especially love it mixed with white and again you can't see the true color on camera because it's fluorescent and you'll see several fluorescents here but trust me when I tell you it's kind of my perfect, <laughs> trust me when I tell you, <laughs> it's a color that I love. It's kind of my perfect fluorescent red. It's a little bit pinkish and really, really pretty. So I'm not sure if there's any way I can um, show you exactly how this looks, but if you like um, fluorescent red, 
I think you will like this. And then this is a color opera that I have a love-hate relationship with, but I wanted to try Holbein's version because I do love their watercolors. And I think this, for me, I'll have to mix it with white to really like it. On screen, it looks great. In reality, it's more garish than it's looking. I think it's great. Same like the Luminous Red. I think it's, um, you know, works well for mixtures like to really brighten up uh, other colors but uh, in reality it's a bit more garish which makes a mistake that i made quite unfortunate and i'll get to that later it's not a big mistake okay moving on to the next five you won't be surprised to learn that i got a lot of pinks because pink is like my favorite color and obviously there are like redundant shades here. Okay, this one is pale pink. So this pale pink, I would say, you know, it's, I'm sure I will use it, but you know, you can get kind of a similar color very, very easily when you add a lot of white to a pink okay this one is light magenta yeah this one is a little bit more has a bit more of oomph to it well it's just darker so this is also quite a standard color and a lot of brands do it it's basically you know magenta mixed with white and you get kind of this mid-tone. Yeah, it's PR 170 and white. Yeah, probably I would skip the pale pink. I mean, I might end up using it, um, you know, more than I think, but it's definitely a color that is easy to mix. This one is pink and it's also quite fluorescent. I kind of like this one because even though it's fluorescent, it's a bit more opaque. And so it kind of looks like the opera with white mixed into it, which is exactly what I said about the opera. But that's probably how I would want to use it. So I really, really like this uh, version of, yeah, this is still like a fluorescent color, but I really, really like it. Yeah, it has some fluorescent um, pigments in it. I have some big hopes for this one. I love, love, love purpley pinks. They're like my favorite, like purpley pinks and violets are my favorite, favorite colors. This is Cosmos Pink. It's good, it's good, but it's not like my perfect, perfect color, but it's pretty. And then we have Rose. Now, Rose, I have to say, there's a color with the same name from Turner, and I'm a little bit obsessed with it. It's kind of my perfect pink. This one is completely different, but I'll show you the other one, um, just because the name reminded me. This is gorgeous. This is kind of, reminds me of my beloved Bright Rose, um, which, is like my favorite, favorite pink in watercolor. Again, made by Holbein. That's also the reason why I really wanted to try um, some of the other colors you'll see. I mean, with this one, I just love the formula and the color range. But as I said, I like, I've, I'm going to um, probably end up using more local to me. Holbein is from Japan. Love, love, love this color. It's called Rose. This is like my perfect pink, like a very, very, um, bluish pink. Uh, the Cosmos pink is a little bit more muted. I think it would be like, I think a lot of people would love it, but I really like my pinks, like super saturated. Uh, let me show you the Turner rose, but as you can see, it's like warmer than this. It kind of looks a little bit like they mixed these two and it's perfect. It looks like this. It looks like this. The packaging is not very accurate. This looks a lot redder. And this to me is like the perfect, perfect, like more warmer pink.
pink. So this is from Turner Acrylic Gouache. And yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just like if you're on the hunt for that perfect pink, this is a good one, like the Rose from Holbein. Again, it's like this a bit deeper um, bluish one and then Rose from Turner. A rose by any other name, right? Hmm, let's see, wait, I wanna open both of them to see. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. It's good. <laughs> Spoiler, it's very, very good. Um, these are like the two that I'm going to swatch for you now. They're very, very intense, but I love to use them in their like full intensity, but also mixed with um, a little white, more white and a lot of white. And I'm, I don't, can't do this right now for every color. Maybe we'll do that in a different video. This one looks very promising. This to me looks like, um, you know, regular, I don't know where it stopped recording. Hey, okay, this is called magenta. I wouldn't call this magenta. I would call this a red violet. And this is just way, way, way too purple. I mean, I like the color, but I think the name is deceiving. So um, if you want like a magenta or what, you know, most other brands call magenta, uh, I would go for either the rose violet or the rose one, because this one is really, really, this is like a red violet. Like every other brand calls this color red violet. Um, this is way too bluish to be magenta, in my opinion. I don't want to argue with Holbein because I really respect <laughs> what they do <laughs> for us. Pray for me. <laughs> I have this color from Turner and it's almost right, but it's just like a teeny, teeny bit more purple than I would like. I think this is a winner. It's so beautiful. I love this color. It's just like, this is my color. Well, my perfect color would probably be a little bit more saturated, like cobalt violet, but this is lovely. Pale lilac. And let's see the older sister, lilac. Trying to get all the water out. I really don't like to use these paints with um, a lot of water. Okay, lilac is really, really purpley. I'm just saying. Really, really purpley. It's a pretty purple. It's just not, it's a bit too bluish for my personal taste, but I might be able to get kind of my perfect um, violet if I add a little bit of this to one of the um, deeper pinks. But it's a pretty purple lilac. And then you, I also have hopes for you because I love lavender use it all the time, but I did find a great version um, from those big, oh, this is pretty, this looks very pretty. Yes, it's gorgeous. So this is called Pale Lavender, and it's exactly that, and it's beautiful. I wanted to say that I, I know that I've been kind of showing uh, a lot of product lately, which is not something that I actually like to do on YouTube, I have to say. But first of all, if you want to see more painting or like if you are, if that's what you want to see, uh, I invite you to join my Patreon where I share a lot, a lot of painting. But I also uh, intend to do more uh, painting or like combine, combine product talk and I don't plan on, you know, buying a lot more. I have a few colors I want to add to my um, range of these because they're so lovely. But I think I'm good. I think mostly what I'll be needing now, this is called Misty Blue and it's lovely. It's like a kind of like a slate um, gray. Yeah, I would say it's gray. It's 
looking gray to me, but it's nice. It's like a little bit bluish. Um, I might have to buy, you know, like more canvases and stuff, but I think I'm good with paint and I think I'm mostly okay with the brushes that I have. And I really want to make the kind of videos that I enjoy watching from other artists, which is more, you know, process and, you know, a little bit like watching, um, like seeing products that they use. So like show you what I'm using. This is ultramarine deep and it's just a beautiful ultramarine, which is my favorite blue. So let's see if I can put this on screen for you. Could probably tolerate it if it was even a bit more reddish, but it's a good, it's a good ultramarine. Very, 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 very particular when it comes to blue. There are not a lot of blues that I like. Ultramarine is one of the few that I like. I wanted to try a couple more. So this is aqua blue and kind of gives me kind of a cerulean type of blue vibes. It's not my kind, it's like not my perfect blue. My perfect blue is aquamarine. This is pale aqua. This I like. Lovely color. Really happy about that one. So yeah, so I want to do videos where I just show more painting, some product talk, but in connection with um, you know, how I use it, not just look what I bought. So actually stuff that I use. That's my hope for the channel. Share more of my paintings. And in whatever medium that is right now, it's mostly acrylics. This color is lovely and it's called Emerald Green. So the way that I really like to use these uh, particular colors, I have a bunch of Turner ones that are really really identical. This is Viridian. Uh, really identical in performance to the Holbein ones. I probably I could never I don't think I could I would be able to tell the difference. Uh, this is the kind of color Viridian that gives you the most gorgeous minty colors when you mix it with white. Uh, so my favorite way of using them is with a palette knife and really applying them like in a nice, even, opaque layer. And mostly I've been uh, painting abstracts with them, so having fun with that. This is mint gray, uh, mint green. Don't I have this? Let's see. I have two of these, and they are gorgeous, and I love them. Ah, this is beautiful. This is, as I said, mint green, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous. Color. And I'll show you the pale mint. This is the pale mint. So they're very, very similar. I would say, you know, if you want more, like if you like this shade as it is, then get this color. It's beautiful and I use it a lot as it is because it's so pretty. But you can get the mint green and just add some white to it and then you can have, you know, more options. You know, really, I, I can't remember like the entire range, but I would probably say it's a much better investment to buy uh, saturated colors because you can always lighten them and get like these pale colors but you can't you know amp these up so you really have to think like if you're going to use like if you're going to get uh, a lot of use out of these now I use a lot of white and I mix a lot of light colors so for me I feel like if I hand pick uh, some kind of convenience colors to go to it's fine, but I can't deny that, you know, you get a lot more versatility if you buy more saturated paints, like this one. Like this one, for example, this is leaf green, and this also looks like it has a bit of white in it. No, actually it doesn't, but um, it would make gorgeous colors mixed with some white. And of course, I completely agree, you know, with a lot of people, like you don't need all these colors and it's really really good to know color theory and mix your own colors and I do that a lot also but I also like to have you know colors that are exactly the way that I want them to be 
on hand. So this is Ash Yellow. Wow, that's a really, I always, um, I'm always trying to find neutrals or like semi-neutrals that I like. And this one is really special. I don't even know how to describe it. I would call it maybe a um, muted yellow ochre. It kind of gives me that vibe, but just a bit like toned down. And it's really nice. I do love using yellow ochre. And this is really nice. So I'll just swatch for you so you can see next to these colors if you know you're interested. So I would love to be able to help you, you know, pick your own perfect palette. So this is that pale mint. I love this color. I absolutely love it. But again, you can mix it. And then this one is also one of my favorites. This is ice green. This is like my perfect, perfect aqua color. It's like perfect. I don't know what to say. It's like a perfect color. <laughs> so I love it. Really, really love it. Okay, that's it with all the Holbein gouache acrylics. Before I go on, I want to say something about these paints uh, because they are super, super hyped and you may hear a lot about them. And I'll tell you my opinion. Now, I haven't used, I mean, I used these two quite a bit, but I've used the Turner ones even more and I'm going to um, kind of risk telling you that I think they are, you know, very, very similar products. The great thing about acrylic gouache, which is basically matte acrylic paint, is the finish. Um, it's just beautiful. If you love that kind of smooth, opaque, I mean, not all colors are opaque, but many of them are um, finish, uh, you're gonna love these. Now, I thought that these were quite unique and I think they are unique. I mean, the Holbein ones in their color range, which is quite unparalleled to other uh, main brands, uh, except Turner. I think they have a equally impressive color range. But since then, I have tried a few uh, European-based options. So if you're in Europe, this might be um, you know, very useful for you to hear. I've tried this brand, uh, which is from France, and true only uh, one, <laughs> only uh, one color, but I can see the finish. And these are much more affordable, like you get more paint for your back because they are made in the European Union, unlike these which are imported from Japan. And Again, the color range, like this one, is very, very standard color range. It's, like, nice, but, you know, nothing like this. And then this one has also a nice color range um, with some interesting options. But my point is that you can definitely uh, at least find for, like, your basic colors and many more. Um, you can find more cost-effective options. Uh, another brand that I found is this, I think it's Italian, I mean this says it's made in Italy, and they have kind of more of, kind of, almost looks like it's geared towards like home decor, um, that's kind of the vibe that I got with a lot of like these muted colors, whereas this one uh, from Switzerland, they have a very, very kind of traditional um, artist strange color selection. Uh, and these ones have like a few fun colors. You can see like a little bit, a little bit more on trend. My point is that uh, there are definitely local options if you're in Europe, and I think also if you're in the U.S., uh, this might be a more of a cost-effective option for you than the Holbein ones. The Holbein, you know, I want to give them credit where credit is due. Their colors are fantastic. The formula is great. It's just um, expensive if you go through a lot of paint. So I wanna say that about them. So I'll show you what else uh, I got, also from Holbein. Okay, the next colors I want to show you are 
I'm shocked at myself that I bought a lemon color. I usually don't buy colors just to mix them, but in this case I did. So, I love Holbein's versions of like their luminous colors. They make me super, super happy. And so I wanted to try them for myself. So this is the heavy body paint. Uh, the reason, you know, I'm, I'm really, really into matte paints these days, but I really, I wanted to have kind of, you know, bigger tubes. <laughs> matte paint seems to be more expensive than regular paint sometimes. So I just wanted to have, you know, color to play around with. And obviously you can use something like matte medium um, to increase that matte finish. And you can varnish your work with uh, a matte varnish. So there are ways around it if you don't like this. So these have, like golden, they have these hand-painted swatches, which I really appreciate because it's such a great way of seeing the color as it is. I only ordered uh, these like luminous colors. This is the luminous lemon. I wanted to try their luminous colors because I love how they formulate them in watercolors. That's what I'm familiar with. Other than that, I don't think I will be getting any of their um, heavy body paint unless, I don't know, something about like, you know, it's standard paint and unless there's like a special color or you find, I don't know, a formula that you're very, very attached to, but I don't know, it's heavy body paint. Um, I don't see a reason for me, again, to buy something from Japan. It's just with these luminous colors, I was intrigued. Uh, this luminous yellow is very, very orangey. Um, it's a little bit disappointing, I have to say, but I think it'll be fun to play around. I think uh, the joy of using these paints is when you're mixing colors and they really can amp up the um, colors. I love bright colors, so that's how I plan to use them. And this, this makes me incredibly happy. The luminous red, it's everything I love about um, kind of fluorescent red colors. It's really, really perfect. So, you know, if that sounds like something you would enjoy, um, this is beautiful. Now, let's move on to Luminous Opera. Uh, these also come in a set, but I think, I think it was actually cheaper to get them open stock. Luminous Opera. A little bit garish, but I think with other colors it's going to look fantastic and I think uh, like you can make beautiful violets with it when you mix it with blue. And I think also with white it's going to look amazing. So Luminous Opera. Now the next one is my color. <laughs> Luminous Rose. It looks like my beloved bright rose. And hopefully it's going to, yeah, that's, that's my color. So this is to me, it's just like, um, like magenta on steroids. It does look similar to the other magenta that I said. It's not magenta, but it's not as purple. Uh, this is luminous rose. Absolutely love, love, love this color. Love it. And this, like this to me would be a color. I have to check next to my other pinks uh, in my existing collection but this is a color I would definitely uh, order uh, like the Holbein version uh, just for the color like not for the formula because I think it's just like paint I mean it's very high quality you know concentrated paint but I have those also from European brands okay last but not least this is luminous violet and like the Luminous Lemon, uh, I think, I don't know how much I'm gonna use this straight from the tube, but uh, I, I do, I'm kind of more into mixing colors 
with acrylics than I feel like I am at times with watercolors in the sense of just like getting colors just for mixing. But yeah, this is, you know, a really lovely violet uh, neon. Okay, and then I don't know, I got actually four. I accidentally ordered two of the uh, Opera. I don't think they have, this is the Holbein Fluid Acrylic. I don't think they have the Luminous Rose in this formula. So I just wanted to try their Fluid Paint. And this color is Marigold. Just looked really pretty. That's like my kind of yellow. Oh, that is very, very pretty. It's exactly like my perfect yellow. Oops. So this is the fluid one, but I also got inks, so that's exciting. And then this marigold is a good color. It's kind of like what I would probably use as like my yellow in a painting. And then this is the opera one. So this marigold, again, it's not, I don't think it's the kind of color that is worth like buying something imported. Okay, not sure about this formula. Seems kind of watery. This is Luminous Opera. Mm. Of course I got two of the least impressive colors. Oh well. And then another color I wanted to try and I decided to try it in the fluid uh, formula is Shadow Green. Oops. Nice. Nice. Yeah, this is nice. This is uh, kind of reminds me of um, zoazite or yeah, like this kind of muted deep green. I really, really like using those. And yeah, I'm still struggling to find dark colors in acrylic that I really like. This one is beautiful. Super happy about that. Uh, I'm sure I can find this also from a, a local brand. But yeah, Holbein, sometimes they just get colors, you know, so right. Okay, and next thing we're going to try, I think, if I'm not too scared, are these inks from Holbein. What I like about these is that they come in these big, nice bottles, just to show you, compared to the High Flow from Golden. This, so here you get, this is again made in Japan, 100 mils, this is 30. So this is uh, three times more paint. I don't remember the uh, the price. I mean, it's more expensive, I think, than the small ones, but it's not three times more expensive. So I got, I really, I suspected that I'm going to like this formula. And so you'll see, I got very, very basic colors. I got primary magenta, ultramarine blue, nickel azo yellow, and greenish yellow. And if I like the formula of these, then uh, I might expand my color range. Twist the cap 90 degrees to open and close. I do like that. Woo! And the color just flows. Okay, the cap feels very, very nice. I mean, these things get messy, but this feels nice. Happy about that. Uh, this is greenish yellow. And it's really kind of like... I love this color, I use it all the time, like this green gold, uh, olive green type of color, gorgeous. And it's quite liquid, obviously, it's ink. I'm very happy, I'm happy about the bottles, not so happy about the price because it is expensive, but uh, I think also anything local to me, I think it's roughly the same price for this amount, so I'll have to check. And then this one is Nickel Azo Yellow. Yeah, this is, again, a color I love to use, kind of that earthy yellow 
Um, Nicolazo Yellow is one of my go-tos in watercolor. And you can see how beautifully transparent this ink is. Really lovely. I think if you kind of want to do, um, you know, watercolor-ish techniques with acrylics, I think this would be a beautiful option. You know, obviously I haven't painted with it yet, but just first impressions. This is magenta, primary magenta. Okay, and last but not least from this is, it's a really, I really like the packaging. <laughs> I mean, every ink is messy, but I like it. It still, still gives me a bit of sense of control. This is ultramarine blue and it's a lovely ultramarine. So these I expect to be workhorses and I'll keep you updated how they perform and how I'm enjoying them. So that's that. And then last but not least, I'm actually a bit regretting that I ordered them, not because I don't think I will like them, just because they're so pricey, it's insane. And again, since placing this order, I found some really good uh, local options for this matte finish paint. So for me, golden is really, really uh, just like too expensive here in Europe. And they kind of annoy me with these teeny tiny containers. But I'll show you the colors. Uh, actually, you can see because they're swatched. Um, these are all beautiful, ultramarine blue, lovely and i have uh two of these you can see i have now these colors uh i've i've played around with these two and the formula is beautiful it's very very comparable to similar uh, matte acrylics um so i would say you know if you can find these for a good price they are very comparable to all of these other matte paints that i've mentioned there's the pale yellow, which is a really nice yellow. It's a little bit on the cool side for me, but it's really pretty. Fluorescent red, again, I'm kind of obsessed with that color. And I wanted, I really wanted to have that matte finish. Uh, let's see how it compares to the um, Holbein. Right, this is the, the Holbein one. It seems quite similar. This one might be a tad orange, like more orangey. Uh, naphthol pink is a great pink. A little bit kind of this muted, um, kind of red, pink, unclear color. And I really, really like it. It kind of annoys me because I don't know if I can find something um, exactly like that. You know, from the tube or jar or whatever. Ultramarine blue is ultramarine blue. Uh, fluorescent violet. I really, really love this, like just a, a bit of this color and mixing it with white. And then cobalt teal is like one of my favorite colors. And this is the real deal. Um, not like their uh, the golden's teal color, which I also love, but uh, this is like the more expensive pigment. So I don't know if it's worth the money, but I wanted to try it because I love uh, using cobalt teal in my paintings like a pop of it yeah i hope that you enjoyed this super long video i promise you there's lots of painting coming and i'm excited to show you what i've been doing and also you know talk products but mostly just like painting and exploring uh, art so thank you for watching i'll see you again in another video very soon bye bye